Hey guys, it's Wade here again. Just wanted to give you a quick project update before I press forward. As you can see, the strakes are glassed. I know this left one's a little hard to tell. I do have the winglets on. They're set as far as the A, B, and C dimension. And they're hot glued. And they've got the stick in place, got some requisite bondo on there as well getting ready to take the wings off and flip the wings over and do the inside layups on the winglets and then I'll be doing the uh, the outside seven plies of uni two ply bid on the winglets and then I'll flip them back upright and do the insides um, you can see that the ailerons are um, functioning or at least you can see it's up and I'm going to show you in just a minute that the ailerons are functioning. That's kind of why I wanted to do the video now. I also wanted to show you the completed strakes. They're pretty much done. All I've got to do is micro them up and paint them. And then I also have to, of course, put the fuel caps in there. Now, why are they different colors? Originally, I was going to do both of them. As far as the external top skins, I was going to do the MGS epoxy and as I started getting ready to do the strakes uh, I was a little low on uni I didn't know how much I had on the roll sure enough I was uh, way too low so I had to order some more I looked at the prices as far as maybe ordering some more MGS epoxy right now it's two hundred and sixty some dollars a gallon and it's eighty to a hundred dollars per quart which you need two of them per gallon I was originally going to do both the left and the right top strakes in MGS, but I had some Easy 84 uh, epoxy, or I, I should say hardener left over. So I went ahead and did the right strake using Easy epoxy, and then went ahead and continued on on the left strake using the MGS. I wanted to save the MGS as much as I could for the myriad of layups that I really, I knew that there were seven plies, I didn't realize that in addition on each side there's two plies rather large of bid as well. So it's gonna take up a lot of epoxy and obviously hardener too to uh, glass those winglets on. So I wanted to conserve my MGS as much as I could, plus I had just, just enough, just a hair left over on the easy epoxy, so I went ahead and used that all up. So the inside is done as far as the cockpit. I'll note as I move to the aft side of the aircraft to show you the ailerons and the firewall aft aileron control tubes. Uh, after the strake tops were completely cured, I went ahead and took everything out from underneath the wings. So the wings are completely supported just by the three standard bolts on each side. There's nothing else holding up these wings except for the, the wing bolts and the center section spar and the straight. So here is the left aileron, obviously. This is the one that was kind of my problem child. This is the closest in tolerance. I only have a 1.9 inch throw up. Uh, and that's exactly what I felt like doing the other day. It took me over three hours to dial these in. It seemed like they were perfect until the next day after I set all the controls. And then the gremlins came in the middle of the night. It seemed to throw everything off. It completely bamboozled me. But So you'll also hear this right here. This, that's the trim down AN311 bolt, which is way too long. I had glassed the channel inside of here not knowing that there was going to be a clearance issue with those bolts. On the other side I used an AN310 but I only had two of them on hand so I went ahead and used the AN311 here. Now I did over on the other side I did the requisite two threads showing just barely but over here even though I trimmed it down it's still squeaking inside of there so you'll hear that. I'll, when I take the ailerons off to finish them I'll, I'll remedy all that, but it's going to sound a little squeaky, especially on the right side. You can see in here the control tubes. Now I do have 
larger, inch and a quarter lower extrusions for my engine mounts. So I had to notch these just a little bit right here for clearance. You can see that one on the right as far as the throw, uh, I get a 2.1 inch up travel and or actually 2.2 up travel and 2.1 down travel. And then over here on this side, I get the 1.9 up and the 2.0, 2.1 going down. So it's just right on the line. But the problem is if you've messed around with trying to dial in the aileron system, when you move these rod ends and you thread them in or thread them out, then there's a whole bunch of factors that are going into the system. Uh, you know, you throw this one all the way up and then all of a sudden, you know, at zero, your, your ailerons are completely off uh, and they're not matched at, at you know, the, the trailing edge of the wing. They're not matched with each other at trailing, the trailing edge. So you gotta be careful. But I do have the quick disconnects in here. I like to throw in, besides just the pin here, maybe it's my paranoia, but I go ahead and throw in an extra AN3 uh, bolt. So this one's just got the temporary nut on here because I'm going to take this apart here soon. So I've got the quick disconnect on the right side and then also the quick disconnect on the left side. And then again, this is drilled up inside here to the CS122 and the CS121. But I'll try to back up a little bit. And then over on this side as well. Yes, I know that's annoying. And then I'll show you the control stick actually moving these suckers back and forth. So I have the infinity control stick and this all the way to the right when it hits the wall is basically when I'm at that 2.2 inches up as far as, now when I say that, that's the gap between the trailing edge of the aileron and the trailing edge of the wing. Two, about two inches will give you the 20 degrees you want. 1.9 inches is just a hair under that. But try to see if I can get over here with this. So here we are. There is a little bit of wiggle, uh, so I would say probably about three eighths of an inch, uh, but that's because I don't have all the bolts in that are going to be, you know, they're not tightened completely tight because I'm going to take this thing back apart. So I'm hoping to, to take that down considerably. But that's the ailerons. Those are done. Again. I'm getting ready here probably within the next couple of hours. I'm going to take at least one of these wings off. I heightened both the wing dolly and the, uh, the dolly that I had the fuselage on when it was inverted. And I increased the height on those both about a foot and a half so that I could use those for work tables because these darn winglets are so high, they're so tall that when you flip them upside down you need a much much taller work surface. So I spent a couple hours converting those right before I took this video, but those are done. Here's a picture of that. And that's it. So the strakes are done for the most part and the control system as far as the aileron controls, the elevator controls are done as well. And then, of course, I don't have any rudders yet, but as soon as those are, are made, hopefully here within the next few weeks, I will rig the rudder system up as well. So that's it. Hey, thanks for watching. Cheers.